Hello Year 5, so it's my turn now, Chapter 5 of this brilliant book that you've been listening to and reading, The Jamie Drake Equation by Christopher Edge. Chapter 5. I walk slowly up the stairs that hug the curving wall, my eyes straining against the gloom that lurks inside the observatory. The concrete steps leading up to the next level are coated with pigeon droppings, and I have to pick my path carefully to make sure I don't slip. It's cold in here, but despite the chill, I can feel a bead of sweat sliding down my face as the barrel of the shotgun pressed into my back pushes me forward again. Keep moving, the woman tells me as we reach the top of the stairs. In there! Trying to keep down the taste of sick that's bubbling in my throat, I push open the door in front of me and step through into a huge, dimly lit room. The floor is smeared with a thick layer of dust, but the circular walls are filled with banks of electronic equipment. There are rows of computers that look like they haven't been upgraded since the 1980s. The chunky monitors and keyboards all covered in the same thick layer of dust. Multicoloured cables snake between tall grey cabinets, their insides crammed with reels and dials. An eerie silence hangs in the air, but it's what I can see in the middle of the room that makes me catch my breath. Mounted on a towering base that stretches six metres high is a huge telescope. It looks like a space rocket. The long white tube as thick as a tree trunk and studded with rivets, gears and levers, pointing up at a 45 degree angle. On one side of the tower, metal stairs spiral upwards to reach a chair that is mounted on a set of rails between the bottom end of the telescope. And at the other end, the telescope lens looks out of the rectangular slit, the rusting dome still open to the stars that are starting to come out overhead. A prod in my back reminds me that I've not come here for a spot of stargazing. Over there, the woman says, pushing me towards a long desk that is set in front of one of the banks of defunct computers. Empty your pockets. I've not even seen her face, but with a shotgun shoved in my back, I'm not in a position to argue. Reaching into my pockets, I empty them out onto the table in front of me. My house keys, a packet of star mix, my revision worksheet, and the £20 note that Mum gave me. Everything, she growls. With a trembling hand, I take out my mobile phone and lay this down next to the rest. There goes any chance of phoning the police. My brain starts to cycle through what will happen next. Every possibility, I imagine, is even worse than the last. She's probably some serial killer who roams abandoned buildings looking for kids to kill. Why didn't I stay at home? I can feel the gun still pressing into the small of my back and from over my shoulder I glimpse the shape of a shadow leaning forward. I hear a click and almost jump out of my skin, waiting for my life to flash before my eyes. But instead of a shot, I see the lamp on the, de on the desk flicker into life. Sit down, she tells me, the strange shadow of her shotgun pointing to the chair on the other side of the desk. I sit down. The desk lamp is shining straight into my face, almost blinding me. What are you doing sneaking around here? I squint up at my questioner, trying to see past the blotches forming in front of my eyes. Instead of the crazed killer of my imagination, a middle-aged woman wearing a pink cardigan over a floral dress is standing there instead, her black hair twisted into braids. In her hands, she's holding a telescope its eyepiece pointing straight at me like the barrel of a gun. The realisation hits like a bullet. This is what she had pressed into my back all the time. I've been taken prisoner with a telescope. 